Greetings, all you wonderful people. My goodness, we miss you tremendously. I wanna welcome you tonight. Thank you for joining us for family time. I know you're gonna be blessed tonight. And I just wanna quickly give you a brief update on Bishop Owen McManus Jr., my husband. He wants me to send you his love and greetings. He is still in the recovery process. He's doing very well. Every day just gets better and better and better. And we see his strength and we see him improving every day. He wants me to send his love and greetings to you because we love you so much. And we so appreciate all of the love and the greetings and all the prayers that have been sent our way. We really appreciate it. You guys are so amazing. And we thank God for you tonight. And I have a question I just want to start out tonight and it's the question we're going to address on tonight's program is, is divine healing for the church today? And we're going to address this through God's word and you're going to be encouraged and you're going to be blessed. And you know what we ask of God is not just something that we ask of him and he cannot back up with his word. God is always consistent with his word. And what we ask of him should always be consistent with his word. So God will never ask us to believe for something that he has not already promised it and he will not do for us. I am so excited to be joined with our great friends, Pastors Harve and Leslie Campbell. Thank you guys for being with us again. You've been such an encouragement through all of this trial and pandemic that we've, we're still going through. And uh, I don't believe you just go through things in life, but I believe that you become more than conquerors. That's Amen. what the Bible says. So we've just been encouraging people along the way and you guys have been such a strength in that area. And this is Pastor Chris Davis, one of our associate pastors here at City Church. Bless you, we're so glad to have you tonight. But Pastor Harvey, let me ask you the question I asked our audience tonight. Does God still heal today? That's the question of the hour. And the question is significantly important because there are wonderful believers in the body of Christ that are happy in a church and certainly it could be some of the viewers tonight who are in love with the Lord, they've received Christ as their savior, but somewhere in their doctrinal belief system, they're not totally convinced that God still heals today. Hmm. And that's why I think the subject is so prolific today. There are people that actually think, and some churches even say that the healing was just for when Jesus was on this earth. And so, Tonight, I think it's a great opportunity to revelate from the scripture patterns and principles. Let's not be concerned about what any of us think, feel, or say, but what does the Bible say? Yeah. What pattern or principle can we find to support the fact that God does heal? And of course, it's easy if you're someone like me. I was desperately ill as a 16-year-old mm -hmm. and God dramatically transformed my life. Yeah. The doctor said to me, by the time you're 23, you'll be in a wheelchair. Medically, we can do nothing for you. Well, here I am today. I'm 57 years of age. And because of God's grace, because of his healing touch, that changed everything yeah. for me. When he touched my physical body, I went back to the same Jewish doctor, a specialist in Durban, South Africa. And on the report, he wrote that the reversal in this young boy's condition can only be ascribed as a miracle. Wow. Here's a man who is a medical scientist, doesn't of himself believe in a supernatural form of miracles, but that was the only explanation he could write in the documents. He tested me on Friday, had a whole sheet of blood work, and on Monday after prayer from the weekend, everything was different. So I think it's easy for someone when God has touched your body to absolutely say without any shadow of a doubt that in this day and age, in the year 2020, yes, God heals. But if we can help people understand that it supports that in his word, I think people will be greatly blessed tonight. Absolutely. And I'm so glad you said yes to that because, you know, everybody's gone through things and we go through things in our body and where we're in need of healing. So thank God that we are in a day that the Lord heals today. That means that there is 
hope for you. There is hope for me because our Jesus is alive and he wants to heal you today. I think also it's important that as Christians that we study the word when it comes to healing. If we are trusting God for a miracle in our bodies, we owe it to ourselves to know what the word says yes. about healing. Because if you've gone to a doctor and you've been given a report, and I mean, it could just be a mild sickness. It could be something severe. It could be something even unto death. So you have the facts medically of what the doctor is saying is physically wrong with your body. But then as a Christian, we can go to the Word to see what does the Word say right. about us being healed. Because you cannot look in two directions at the same time. And if you only focus on the medical report, it's very difficult to rise above that and allow your faith to be built up and to trust God for healing. Yeah. Whereas if you are mindful of the facts, that's what the medical report says, but you then focus on what the word says, mm -hmm. that allows you to be built up in your faith where you literally, it's like you have a pass to receive the healing from God. That's so good, Pastor Leslie. Two, two things that uh, come to my mind uh, that has just really transformed uh, my faith uh, when it comes to healing is that uh, two things from scripture as you're talking about uh, searching the scripture is that one, can God heal? And two, will he? Right. One, uh, what, what I found is that many people don't have a, a, you know, many believing people who believe that God is all powerful, believe that he is able to heal. But then they wrestle with what will he heal me? Right. And I think it's so powerful and so important that as we're looking through the scriptures, we're we're finding God's answers to those questions because they'll elevate your faith in a way that you can lay hold of that promise that okay. you talked about. Yes. And. You know, just what we are recently going through personally, um, for those of you that don't know, uh, my husband, Bishop Owen McManus Jr., uh, surprisingly had emergency bypass surgery on June 5th of this year, so just a couple weeks ago, and um, he just went in for regular just test done and then was instantly in surgery and thank God he is now in the recovery process. There's a whole miracle in that because to find the blockage and to be able to fix the blockage without having any heart damage is a miracle inside itself. But he is recovering well and he will be back to just full throttle uh, soon here. He just has to re go through the recovery process, which you know is frustrating because you're used to just being go-getters. But uh, praise God, he is going to recover well. We thank you for praying with us. But I'm saying that to tell you that in all that you saying about scriptures you're talking about the word I think what's important too just when you're in the moment when you're the one that's sick when you're going through these moments when your body is really weak whether that's emotional um, sometimes we need inner healing sometimes it's a phys physical healing when you're going through that the importance of course, of the word of God, but also on leaning to other people to be there for you spiritually is so important, which brings me to the local church. How important it is that you were in a local church that when we're weak, even spiritually, it's very hard to be so strong spiritually when you're so weak physically or emotionally that you really sometimes have to lean on other people and let them feed those scriptures and, and that encouragement into your life. So if you're going through something today, I encourage you to lean on the Lord and lean on other believers that can be there for you, that can encourage you, that can just feed you the word of God. And, and it's just amazing how you can literally feel the prayers of people when you're going through things. The, the prayer of the saints is just amazing to me how you can literally feel. It's like a blanket of peace came on me when my husband was in surgery. And that's because the church 
was all gathered together praying for us at that moment, at the very moment he was in surgery. The church was praying. And it's amazing. You're not consciously thinking, oh, the church is praying. There's so much going on in your mind and your spirit, but the Lord was there. So thank God for the word and thank God for other believers. Don't you also think, though, that part of that peace you received was the knowledge that you had in your spirit according to scripture Absolutely. that God was going to undertake, Absolutely. that God was going to touch his body, which is why it's so important to know the word. It's like a person who is trusting God for a job, but they don't prepare their CV. Correct. They wait until they receive the in interview and then it's like a mad scramble to try and put a CV together. You've got to be prepared before that interview. Right. Have everything written down. Have the knowledge of what you're going to say when you go into an interview. And it's when you're faced with sickness. Yes. If you don't have the word inside of you and you don't have the knowledge that God says he will heal you, mm -hmm. then it's very difficult when you're faced with a situation situation or a sickness or a disease to be able to draw on that. So part of your peace mm -hmm. not only came from the knowledge of the church coming together right. in unity to pray, but in your spirit man, you already had the assurance that God will heal, yes. that God will touch him, that God will bring him through. That's one thing the Lord showed me in his scripture that the Bible says, it doesn't say get strong in the Lord. When times hit you, it's not time to start lifting your spiritual weights. It says, be strong in the Lord. Be right. strong in the power of his might. Well, you know, and, and just to kind of uh, draw in a connection to what you're saying about how the church uh, comes together in those moments and can be uh, that can be so vital. Uh, you know, there's a there's a pattern in Scripture in, in James chapter five. I know Pastor Harvey will love this, but it says to call for the elders of the church. There's a there's a moment uh, that God gives a pattern in Scripture that sometimes you may be believing on believing the Lord personally, but you have to extend that 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 hand of faith to reach out and call for His 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 the leadership really it says yes. the elders in the church but pastor harvey why is it so important to to call upon the elders according to that pattern of scripture well <clears throat> pastor chris you highlight one of the most significant scriptural truths about healing and that truth is that when you study the scripture and this script has been excellently prepared, there's many scriptures that we can share with the audience over these next two programs. But what you will notice, and it's not glaringly obvious, is that the majority of the healings that are recorded in the Bible happened through the hands or directions of another person, not the person who themselves got healed. And that is a unique pattern within wow. the scripture. It supports how you felt uplifted yes. that uh, Friday morning when Bishop was going under the knife. Um, I hope he's not watching this because he <laughs> might feel the pain again, you know, with, with saying that. But um, the reality is there was hundreds of people praying for you and him and the surgeons at that moment in time. And then the scripture comes to mind, he sent forth his word and healed them. And so when we look at these examples in the scripture, to your point, Pastor Chris, those who are sick among you, call for the elders of the church. Let them anoint you with oil and the prayer of faith will save the sick. Mm -hmm. So you could be lying on your last legs on your deathbed. And this is what I, my point I want to make in answering your question. There is, an, there is a su superior responsibility on each of us as Christians to make sure we follow the pattern in God's word. Mm -hmm. If we're lying on our deathbed and we don't call for the elders, we are actually disobeying the word Correct. of God. Correct. So you bring in the elders. Uh, I can cite an example. I was in uh, Ghana, in Accra, Ghana, in West Africa. And there was a team of us there ministering at a large convention. And our keynote speaker um, ate something that just didn't work for him. Mm -hmm. And here you are in a remote part of Africa and you, it's easy to eat something that locally everybody loves. But <laughs> the Western stomach just did not know what to do with it. He got desperately sick. Mm -hmm. He was vomiting. He, he couldn't hold anything. He, the doctors came, called, the hotel called doctors. And they said to him, five days, we're putting you on 
some pills. I'd never seen them so big before, wow. uh, just like horse tranquilizers. And they said, you, you can't get out of this bed for seven days. And there was five of us, and we did exactly what the word says. We called all five together. Uh, most of the team with us was in eldership at the church. We anointed him with oil and we prayed the prayer of faith. That was about three o'clock in the afternoon. Eight o'clock the next morning, he was preaching to a crowd of 5,000 people. Wow. The Praise prayer the of faith will yes. save the sick. So you highlight one of the most key principles. As we go through the scriptures, you will see almost in every case, it was somebody else that was involved in the process of God manifesting a miracle of healing. That's right. You know that you can even do it with us having been in lockdown. You can even do it on WhatsApp video or Skype. My mum in England woke up and she had terrible pain in her shoulder. She couldn't lift her arm. This is just going back a few weeks. And she sent me a WhatsApp and she said to me, she can't video chat with me because she was in so much pain. And I said to her mum, I said, we are going to pray for you and I want you to pray the prayer, be in agreement with us with the prayer we're sending you. So Harvey and I got together and we prayed for her. We recorded the prayer and she played it several times. And the next morning when she woke up, she was completely healed. I mean, there was no uh, uh, explanation. She was able to lift her arm. She'd even struggled the day before to get out of bed because she could not move her shoulder. And she immediately wrote back and she said she felt the anointing when she was playing the recorded prayer over her body. That's right. So, I mean, it, even with us not being able to gather together as a church, you can still call the elders yes. to pray for you Absolutely. because they are able, like Harvey says, the, the, that the Lord sent forth his word and healed them. We can still send forth yes. the word of God that can touch people's lives wherever they are. I, <laughs> one scripture that... I personally love, I personally cling to is Hebrews 13, 8 that says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Now, if you read your word and you have seen and, and witnessed so many wonderful testimonies in God's word of the healing power of Jesus, that gets you very excited Amen. because Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So you go to all these amazing stories of miracles that Jesus performs, and it's like, wow, you're just like in awe reading the word of God, but it's the same today, well, and it will changed. be the same tomorrow. Right. right. So if, if, if that scripture is true, which it is, all scripture is true, yes. he is the same. So if healing was okay in the days that he walked on this earth, then and he was the healer then, it means that he's the healer today. Right. And that displaces, or rather, let's put it in the positive, it supports the belief and the pattern in the word that Jesus still heals, that our heavenly Father yes. is still performing miracles of healing in the church today yes. because he is the same yesterday, he's the same today, and the word promises that he will still heal tomorrow. That's yes. exciting. I think it's so important too that, that, that we understand that, you know, Jesus, though he walked the earth physically, the mm -hmm. physical representation of his body on the earth today is the church. When the believers yeah. come together, you know, the Bible, 1 Corinthians uh, talks about the, the gifts of the spirit and how one of those gifts being the gift of healing right. operates in the church. So, so we can miss an opportunity for God to touch our lives, for the Lord to heal our bodies or, mm -hmm. or just whatever we need from the Lord if we're not connected to the church. And I, I think it's so uh, important, uh, you know, as you were talking, Pastor Leslie, I, I just, I could see that, you know, as we talk about how um, you call upon the elders of the church, when Jesus was walking the earth, when did he say, no, I'm not going to come heal you? Right. When someone came to him and had a need, he responded. Yes. Yes. He may not have had to go there physically because he sent his word, 
Right. Sometimes he went there and he had to move people out of the house to, <laughs> <That's right. Yeah. laughs> to get right. that negative atmosphere and that, right. that negative faith out of the room. But whenever people called upon him, mm -hmm. he responded. And I'm, I, I just, I'm so excited today that we're talking about it. And you're saying, Pastor Leslie, that there's an opportunity, even though we're in a shutdown, even though we're yes. in COVID-19, that there's no distance for the anointing, for the word of God to yes. go and perform yes. miracles and healing in people's lives. Ooh, and I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm getting so excited. It reminds me of what Exodus um, 15, 26 says, for I am the Lord who heals you. That's another encouraging scripture. And it's also so, so foundational. It goes right back to the Old Testament. And we, we've got scriptures from the whole Bible from the beginning to the end. And here is God right in the beginning saying to his people two things. One, I am the Lord, not the false gods that you used to serve or some golden calf that you make because you're bored and you've yeah. got nothing to do. I am I the am. Lord. And then he follows it by saying, who heals you? So our healing yeah. is intimately connected to him. Mm. It's not the healer who's praying for us or the faith healer or the pastor. It's not the one laying hands on us. It is God. I am the Lord who heals you. Which ties back with Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today and forever. Have so if an exodus, I am the Lord that healeth thee. He still is. He's still the Lord yes, he that is. healeth thee. Yes. You know, there's a song that we sing. Um, it says, I'm a good, good father. It's who I am. It's who I am. And I'm in love with you. It's who I am. It's who I am. I'm a good, good. I'm not going to sing for you today, but it really is. He really is a good, good father. Amen. He's the Lord. You know, we're, we're past Father's Day now. But when you think of the Lord as your father, if you think of being a father and your children being sick, my goodness, you have two little ones. I have four kids. Now I have a grandbaby. And my Lord, if they're sick, don't you want to see them well? And the Lord wants to see you well. You are his child. You are his chosen vessel. So you have to know that the Lord wants to heal you today. Boy, this is an exciting time in the Lord. I know you're being encouraged. I know you're being strengthened. You, you may be weak in body today. You may be just getting reports. I know what it is to get natural reports that do not look good, that the outcome may not look good, but I'm telling you with the strength of the Lord and, and, and just through this program, I know that the Lord is strengthening your body. He's touching your body in such a way. So continue to be encouraged tonight. Continue. I believe by the end of the program that you're going to feel the strength of the Lord even come on your physical body tonight. What about Psalm 146, 8? What does that say? The Lord gives sight to the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. I actually said to Harvey when I read this, the Lord gives sight to the blind. You know, God doesn't only heal us physically. Mm -hmm. He heals us mentally and emotionally, spirit, soul, and body. So I said to, to Harvey when we were coming here, we were actually talking about the script, and I said, you know, that the Lord gives sight to the blind. That can be physically. Yeah. You know, if you, if, if you have blindness in your eyes, God can touch your eyes. He can give sight to you no in the natural. But also he can give sight to you in terms of revelation when you read a scripture. Yes. You know, once I was blind, but now I see. You know, you can read a scripture one day and then read it tomorrow, and it's suddenly, it's a light bulb moment. God gives sight to the blind. He mm -hmm. opens up your spirit man to read a scripture that can become revelation to you today that was not yesterday. Right. So it's, it's two facet in a sense. I have learned that so much about, um, you know, the story with the woman with the issue of blood in the Bible. And of course she was sick for a very, very long time. And only if you have been sick a long time, can you imagine day after day, just what it takes to get out of bed, to just take care of your everyday needs? You know, a lot of us can just go about life and don't have to think about that, but there are people who are really struggling. This lady was really struggling for a long time. And then Jesus comes by and we know the story. She touches the hem of his garment. And I love what the Bible says. It goes along with what you're saying. 
it says, it don't just say that he just healed her. He did heal her, but it says he made her whole. Now, that's a whole nother element, Pastor Harvey, <laughs> in being healed and being made whole. Because I believe when you're, when you're sick and, and you go through life and, and you're struggling like she was a very long time, I believe there's so much, like you're saying, emotionally. I believe there's so much mentally. I believe there's so much just how you view yourself, your confidence, every area of your life. So Jesus not only healed her physical ailments that was holding her down, but he literally made Ho ho. I believe there's so many people watching tonight that the Lord not only wants to heal you, but he wants to make you whole. Amen. And that, that means spirit, soul, and body. Yes. You know, we've been talking a lot about that over the last few weeks. And so um, how are you doing if you've got a physically profound body? You yes. know, you're chiseled like a like an Olympic athlete from the 50s, not an ounce yes. of fat on you, but you know, in your soul and your spirit, you're just a Correct. mess. What's the point, right? Yes. I mean, it's, it's just spirit, soul, and body, I will make you whole. Yes. So we can say confidently tonight that God is a God who is able because he created us yes. to heal us in every dimension of every our lives. Dimension. And that's powerful. Yes. Right. Without Jesus touching the woman with the issue of blood, her life would have been just a terrible mess her whole life. Yes. And she sought him out. Yes, he didn't did. go looking for him. Yes, she she sought him out. She had such confidence that if she could just touch the hem of the garment of Jesus, she would be made whole. Yes. And he feels, the Bible says, tells a great story. He's thronged by a crowd and he says, who touched me? Mm -hmm. And the disciples are like, oh, but, but you can see there's no social distancing here. <laughs> there's, there's people all around yeah. you. How can you say that? And he turned around and he knew that virtue yes. had been left him. What happened was she made a demand in the realm of the supernatural. Yes. That's how we understand it today, because healing is not a natural act. It is a supernatural act. Yes. There was no healing line. There were no elders. There was no anointing with oil. There was no service. There was no praise and worship. Amen. She pushed through the crowd, probably yes. on her hands and knees, making a way for herself because she was almost like a leper because she had an issue of blood. She was looked down upon. She was castigated into some degree and mm. she made a demand on the supernatural and supernaturally yes. she was healed. Amen. Well, I feel the presence of the Lord and I believe that tonight the Lord wants to heal your body. He wants to make you whole. He wants to touch you emotionally, physically, in every area of your life. So we're going to pray right now and believe God to meet every need in your, not, in your life by the power of the Holy Spirit. Father, we thank you for the anointing of the Holy Spirit. We thank you, Lord, that there's no distance in prayer. And we thank you that you are moving upon the lives of your people, God. We thank you for healing arthritis right now. We thank you, Lord, that those back pains are just gone in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Father, for that knee, Lord. I thank you for your healing power in Jesus' name. We thank you for healing cancer tonight, diabetes, heart disease. In the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord, that a mental chemical disorder, Lord, is being healed in the name of Jesus. We believe you at your word. God, we thank you, Father, that your spirit, come on, lay hands on yourself where you're watching from right now. You lay hands on that ailment, that stomach, any area that's having, Lord, we thank you for healing the stomach, Lord. We thank you that those ulcers disappear in the name of Jesus. We give you all the glory in Jesus' name. We give you praise. What a mighty God we serve tonight. Isn't Amen. he wonderful? Yes. Isn't he awesome? And I just thank God for what he's doing in your life. I want you to just lift your hands and claim it tonight. Just believe God that every need in your life is healed. Every area is touched. Everything that needs to be restored is restored. And from us to you, we pray that you have a very blessed week. Thank you for tuning in to Family Time. You can follow us on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram at City Church NOLA or visit our website at citychurchnola.com. Tune into our services via live stream on Sundays at 10 a.m. 
And you can also join us for morning prayer every Wednesday at 7 a.m. and family time every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Until next time, have a great week.